All right, nobody likes boring intros, so I'm just going to go ahead and jump right into it. Today, we're going to go over how to set up Netlify functions for your post deployment tasks. So I have VS Code open and I have my website uh, open over here in the left in the file browser. The first thing you want to do when creating a Netlify function is make sure that you give it the right name. In the Netlify functions documentation, they give you a lot of uh, details on what kind of names you need to create when you're creating a function. Um, in my case, I want to use a very specific name because it is something that's going to trigger um, at a, after a successful deployment has happened. So if we scroll down through here, uh, we can go to trigger functions on events. And you can see here that there's a number of different events. And the one that I'm looking for is deploy succeeded. So that's the name of the function that I need to create. And uh, as you can see here, it talks a little bit about how you how you need to name these and where you need to store them. We'll get into that in just a second here. All right, so back in the code now, we're gonna go ahead and create the folder structure that's necessary. So inside of my uh, website, I'm going to create a new folder here called Netlify. And it's gonna be inside of there, another folder called Functions. And inside of there, another folder called Deploy Succeeded. All right, so that's the directory. Now we're gonna go ahead and change into that directory in the terminal. And then we are going to initialize this as a Go module. All right, so now we got a go.mod here and it's just got the name of the function in here. Um, again, I named the module uh, from the GitHub uh, repo name and then the direct and then the directory itself. Now we can go ahead and we can create our main.go. Um, we'll pull an example from the Netlify functions documentation because that's the easiest way to go. So let's check that out first. All right, so back to the docs uh, under build with go here on the left hand side, you can see here that they give you a pretty decent example. Um, it doesn't give you a whole lot of details and that's one of the problems that I ran into with this. So we'll uh, go over that in a second. Back to VS Code, we're gonna go ahead and create a main.go file. ahead and just paste the code in and save that. Um, it's going to go ahead and pretty much take care of everything for me and all the formatting because of VS Code and then I'm going to run go mod tidy which will pull these in and get rid of all the squiggly lines. Um, as you can see, this is actually a Lambda function uh, on AWS. So if you're familiar with Lambda functions, there's not a whole lot different here. It's just that they're triggered based on the directory structure in, way, in which you place them for Netlify. Uh, this basic example doesn't really do anything. If I were to fire this on Netlify, it would just return hello world in the body and a 200 response code. So. Now we're gonna go ahead and modify this to make it do what we want. So we'll move the return down. Now we're gonna create a couple different types here and I'll explain this after I get them typed out. Okay, so if you're wondering what these types are for, the primary reason that they're here is because when Netlify uh, triggers this function, it sends a ton of data in the request body. And you need some of that data to act on to do what you want. And in my case, I need to be able to fire this function on a successful deployment, but only a successful deployment to production. Uh, when I was researching this, the issue I ran into was that this function would fire even when building one of the preview test environments, and I didn't want that. And it took me a long time to figure out how to, how to get exactly that this was a production deployment and not a test environment deployment. I'll put a link in the description of the video that gives you the full payload of what the body includes because it has a ton of stuff in there and it's all pretty useful. Um, but this is really all that I need. And since everything in Go is strongly typed, I really just needed to work out that I need from the request body itself, I need the payload. And then inside the payload, I need the context. And the context contains uh, the information about if this is a production deployment or something else. So let's go ahead and uh, finish writing this all out. Uh, the next step to do is to unmarshal the JSON payload 
and actually turn it into one of these uh, into this request body type. All right, so now the contents of the body, really just this this context value, is now included in the variable request body that was uh, declared on line 21 there. The next part is just the logic that is going to wrap around uh, whether or not to trigger the rest of the functionality. Yep, and I realized that I screwed up here, so we're just gonna take these types and uh, move them outside of the function because I'm an idiot. There, that's better. All right, um, so yeah, like I said, so if this uh, if the context of the uh, of the function being fired is production, then we're going to run my custom functionality, which I'm not even going to deal with. It's it's really just uh, it's a tool that I've written, and I kind of package it all together, and everything is encapsulated by this one function called do. And else, we're just going to print that uh, that this was skipped, uh, and this will show up in the Netlify log, so you can see that it's working correctly. Um, the final step here is to clean up this output. Really all we need is a 200 response and a uh, maybe just a, a body message that says success and then that's pretty much it. The response is not being used by anything so it, it's just for the purposes of being able to see that it's working. All right, that should do it. Um, all we need to do now is just get the module finished up. All right, a little struggle there, but we're all set. And finally, I'm gonna vendor uh, all of the dependencies. All right, this thing's fully baked. Uh, now we can go ahead and push the changes and jump over to Netlify and watch it run. One last thing, um, if you want to see all the contents of the request body um, so you can grab what you need and add them to these structs here. Um, you can just go ahead and in the handler, you can comment everything else out and do a uh, print line on request.body. It'll dump the whole thing into the Netlify console and then you can copy it and do whatever you want with it. Um, but I will just uh, quickly show you that I grabbed it myself as a JSON file and then I uh, cleaned it all up and like I said I'll put a link in the description to all of this but there is a ton of stuff in here okay so now on github um, I have my branch that I just created I'm gonna go ahead and create a pull request for this which will automatically kick off the job in Netlify and now if I go over to Netlify and I just refresh this page what we should see is that there's a deploy preview that is building and we can take a look at this and watch it run And uh, when you're looking through this run through, you can confirm that everything's working correctly um, by seeing a couple things. So functions building here, number two, shows that it is building the deploy succeeded slash main.go. And then under deploy site, it's gonna say one new function to upload. So that shows that it did uh, recognize the function and do what it was supposed to do. Um, my test build completed. So now if I go back and I go to functions, this is preview number 12. So if I go back to functions and I just type 12 in here, we should see deploy preview 12. And I can click on this and we should see some output from this. Yep, and it says context deploy preview detected skipping uh, because the context was not a production deployment. So uh, it just go ahead and went ahead and skipped the whole thing. So that's about it. That's how to write a uh, Netlify function for a post deployment task. And uh, like I said, there's a million other different ways that you can go about uh, using functions in Netlify. They can be used for uh, on-demand data processing when you submit a form. There's also a bunch of other trigger functions that you can that you can use. Uh, you know, when a deploy is building, when a split test goes out, uh, you can use it for the identity platform on Netlify. There's a bunch of different uses. Thanks for stopping by.